tonight, complaints of racial profiling against Canada's national airline as a head of an international advocacy group is denied boarding. Air Canada has issued an apology but maintains it handled the situation well. And Canadians are over the moon. As an Ontario native joins three US astronauts on an upcoming NASA mission. We cover stories about the Taliban's raid on ISIS hideout, Finland's extension to NATO, and a two-year ban on boxing star Amir Khan. Assalamu alaikum and good evening. This is Muslim News Canada on Muslim Network TV. I am Catherine Bullock. The head of Amnesty International Canada says she has been subject to racial profiling and discrimination by Air Canada after she was denied boarding a flight. The news comes after Katie Nivyabandi says she was due to depart from Ottawa International Airport this past Thursday for a work conference in Mexico. She says as she went to check in, the Air Canada agent became confused about her travel documents. Nivya Bandi, who is a permanent resident of Canada and has official refugee status, uses a refugee travel document in lieu of a Canadian passport. The Canadian government says the documents allow a person to travel outside the country. Yet Nivya Bandi says after speaking with two agents and their manager for an hour and a half, she was denied boarding. Nivya Bandi says she was shocked and felt humiliated. She says people who happen to be black or refugees or religious minorities are over scrutinized. She says it is a pattern of systemic racial profiling of travelers. Air Canada has refunded the cost of her flight and apologized to Nivya Bandi. However, the airline maintains it handled the situation appropriately. A man has been charged with five counts for allegedly slashing a bus passenger in the throat on Saturday in Surrey, British Columbia. Another victim was also allegedly attacked at a bus stop with a knife. Shortly after the attack, the suspect claimed to have conducted the attacks for the terrorist group ISIS. The RCMP National Security Police took over the case on Sunday, adding a count of terrorism to his previous four counts of attempted murder and possession of a harmful weapon. According to British Columbia's provincial court records, the attack was allegedly committed for the terrorist group. Terrorism charges are extremely rare in Canada and can result in lifetime in prison. Jeremy Hansen, a former fighter pilot from southwestern Ontario, will join three US astronauts in its upcoming mission to the moon. According to a joint press conference at a space center in Texas, the astronauts will depart Earth as early as November on the Artemis II. This will mark the first time humans will return to the moon since 1972. While the astronauts will not land on the lunar surface, they will orbit the moon for 10 days. If successful, the next step will be the Artemis III mission to land humans on the moon in 2025. This would be 53 years after the first Apollo landing. It is part of the goal of setting up a long-term human presence on the moon. Canada and the US have worked on space exploration together since the early 1960s. Data from a new report shows that at least 850 women and girls in Canada have been killed between 2018 and 2022. This means at least one woman or girl in Canada is killed every 48 hours. The report also notes that women and girls killed by men increased 27% between 2019 and 2022. Linda Basque of InfoFum calls the finding a, quote, crisis. Andrea Gunrad from the Canadian Women's Federation Foundation says Canada does not have resources to prevent and intervene in this violence. Gunrad said it is time to treat it as an emergency. Advocates are calling for femicide to be included in the Criminal Code of Canada. Please stay tuned. We will join you after a short break. Assalamu alaikum and Ramadan Mubarak. I'm here to ask you to support something which we are watching right now. Muslim Network Television. Just like PBS, NPR or even your masjid, we depend on your donations. 
we broadcast Muslims, we put Muslims on air, we bring good news, we counter negative media with positive media. And here is an example. When the terrible earthquakes hit Turkey and Syria, Muslim Americans donated $100 million within five days. That was more than what US government gave in the same time. Getting our news out is what Muslim Network does. This Ramadan, stand for your community. Donate to Muslim Network. Do it now. Visit muslimnetwork.tv. Thank you so much and assalamu alaikum. The US Central Command says today they killed a senior ISIS leader in an airstrike in Syria. They say there were no civilian casualties in the attack. The leader was responsible for attacks that ISIS carried out in Europe and Turkey. He apparently played a key role in the so-called senior staff of ISIS in Turkey. According to the US, ISIS continues to represent a threat to the region and beyond. It says the death of this leader will temporarily disrupt the organization's ability to plot external attacks. There was no additional information as to which attacks the ISIS leader had carried out. A Taliban spokesperson is confirming that their forces have killed six members of a group known as the Islamic State in Khorasan province. The group is the regional affiliate of the Islamic State group. According to the spokesperson, the operation was carried out late Monday night on the group's hideout in a district in Balkh, North Afghanistan. The Taliban's key rival since they grabbed power in August two years ago is the Islamic State in Khorasan province group. The militant group has been targeting both the Taliban and the Shia community in Afghanistan. A suicide attack by ISIS militants in August 2021 killed the Taliban's appointed governor for the province of Balkh. The Taliban swept into power following the retreat of the US and NATO soldiers after a 20-year war. The international community has not recognized their government. A Saudi national who had stabbed a victim and set him on fire has been executed in the Saudi kingdom. According to the Saudi press agency, the convicted man was executed in Medina on March 28th, five days into Ramadan. Berlin-based European Saudi Organization for Human Rights, also known as ESOHR, says this is the first execution in Ramadan since 2009. ESOHR says the latest capital punishment brings the total number of executions to 17 this year. Last year, 147 executions were carried out in the kingdom. Two years ago, the figure was 69. According to the group, more than a thousand executions have been carried out under the reign of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman. In an interview with a media source last year, bin Salman said the kingdom had gotten rid of capital punishment except in cases where the lives of many people are threatened. Finland has become the 31st member of NATO today. It took only a year to finalize, making it the fastest membership application process in NATO's recent history. The move has been dubbed as an historic realignment of Europe's defenses, with an angry warning of countermeasures from the Kremlin. Russia's invasion of Ukraine last year upended Europe's security landscape, prompting Finland and its neighbour Sweden to drop decades of military non-alignment. Finland's foreign minister formally wrapped up the process by handing Helsinki's accession papers to US Secretary of State Antony Blinken. The US is the formal keeper of NATO's founding treaty. NATO Chief Jen Stoltenberg said that Russian President Vladimir Putin had wanted to slam NATO's door shut. He said that NATO has shown to the world that Putin has failed and that aggression and intimidation do not work. Joining NATO places Finland under the alliance's Article 5. This is the collective defence pledge that an attack on one member shall be considered an attack against them all. Finland has a 1,300 kilometre border with Russia. It had stayed out of NATO throughout the Cold War. The UK anti-doping anti organisation, also known as UCAD, has announced a two-year ban on former world boxing champion Amir Khan. 
UK stated that the British boxer's in-competition urine sample from after his fight against Kell Brook at the Manchester Arena last year in February tested positive for Osterine. As a result of the violation, the 36-year-old Khan's win from the bout against Brook was disqualified. Osterine, which can help muscles grow, is prohibited in sports at all times. Khan held unified light, light welterweight world championships between 2009 and 2012. He also held the World Boxing Association and International Boxing Federation titles, along with a lightweight boxing silver medal in Athens's Olympic Games in 2004. Thank you for watching. We need your support for donations. Please scan the QR code on our broadcast or go to our website, muslimnetwork.tv to make a donation so that we can continue to amplify the voices of Muslims in Canada and abroad.